Hey guys, I'm on my way to meet up with one of my friends. He's helping a local pack of Cub Scouts launch a high altitude balloon. The story begins in Lando Lakes, Florida. And where it will end up? Anybody's guess. All right guys, what are we doing today? Um, we are launching a balloon for our adventure plan, which is engineering. We're, so, built, we're getting the balloon. We're taping everything We're taping together. everything so nothing comes off. What? So as you can see over there, they're getting ready for the balloon. They're getting the payload and all that ready. Like, we have a siren, a sign saying it's not dangerous. In case it lands in someone's backyard and they look at it, um, we have an American flag so they don't think it's like a bomb. Got it. Everyone taking pictures is getting GoPro. <laughs> now that the payload's all set up and the tracking beacon is working properly, it's time to fill the balloon with helium. And this is a very delicate process. Everybody involved needs to wear gloves because the slightest scratch or contamination can cause the balloon to pop early. Real slow. <laughs> So soon, um, I don't know exactly what time, but we're going to launch off the balloon. And he's a giraffe today. Alright, the balloon just launched and it's supposed to land about two hours away. And it's gonna take a little bit more than two hours to drive there, so we gotta go right now. Yeah, let's pick from the back seat here. Alright, now the pressure's on. Everybody needs to get into the car and start following the GPS signal. And that balloon's moving fast. By the time we left the park, the balloon was already two miles high and punching through the first layer of clouds. Uh, so the tracker opt, uh, updates every 30 seconds. It's got a little microprocessor in it. The balloon's payload contains a special GPS tracker that can send information over amateur radio frequencies. This data is picked up by a network of stations and automatically posted online so we can view the position in real time. I remember hearing somewhere that GPS doesn't work over a certain altitude. So if you use the right model number of GPS... Yeah, we have the ballistic missile version. <laughs> <laughs> we met a guy in a dark alley and he sold us a GPS receiver. <laughs> Everything was going great, but about 30 minutes into the journey we noticed a problem. The balloon wasn't going up like it should. Instead, it got caught in the jet stream and was headed across Florida at almost 100 miles per hour. And this is bad. So it's, not, it's not as high as we predicted. It's, it's, a, it's only at like 65,000 feet or 60,000 feet. It's a if the balloon doesn't reach its target altitude soon, it'll be well over the state by the time it pops. There you go. 100,092 feet. The balloon reached its target altitude. Now all we can do is sit and wait. The balloon finally popped after 140 miles, but we're not in the clear yet. It's only 30 miles to the ocean, and if we don't land on land, we'll never see the GoPro again. Dude, it's gonna land on the beach. That balloon is coming down fast. It fell down over 30,000 feet in one minute. It's getting really close now. We're so close to the water, we could land on a launch pad at Cape Canaveral, only three miles away. miles an hour speeding up a little bit. The payload is 2,000 feet above the ground and 2,000 feet away from the ocean. Everybody is on the edge of their seat waiting to see where this thing will land. I haven't gotten any updated. No, that may have been our last data point.
don't know if you're watching the track. I know you, you're driving and not watching, but we hit land. Oh, wow, that was so close. Now we just need somebody to not steal the GoPro, <laughs> not take the payload. Yeah. Got the camera and not call the bomb squad this is our because our last data point was at 1000 feet we only had a general idea of where it is so we had to use antennas and directional antennas to help us pinpoint the location we drove around in a car until we picked up its signal oh We knew we were getting close. The signal kept getting stronger and stronger, and we narrowed it down to somebody's backyard. They were nice enough to let us in. We went down to have a look around. That way. That way. I see it! Yeah! It's right over here. There's like a small stream here. There's a little island, and then you can see it. I can see it right over here, floating in like the middle of the water. We got a little bit closer and that was definitely it, but there was one problem. It was still in the middle of a small stream, but luckily one of the neighbors lent us a Save canoe. Camera, whatever happens. One, two, three, this is unbelievable. We did and it gave us this location. It's still beeping, right? Like oh, it is. <laughs> Even the Walmart beeper is making noise. Oh it's my like God, we have a beautiful like, explosion too. Why do you think it's shredded? That's the way it goes. Yeah, it's shredded. Wow. Are GoPro still in there? It didn't even yeah, start. it's full though. Everybody was so excited to see the footage, we booted up the laptop right there in the middle of the street. Oh, baby. Oh my gosh. What? Wow. Check that out. Oh Holy my god. Crap. That's cool. Let's see this. See it? It's, it's pretty stable. That's a curve. That's because there's no wind. Oh, yeah. That's when it was like you know, five miles an hour or whatever. I wonder if you have enough to do a panorama. This balloon sent us on a wild chase 150 miles across Florida, but in the end there was success. This project was entirely planned, funded, and put together by Greg, Joe, and Coit, and without them the adventure for these kids just wouldn't have been possible. I used to be a Boy Scout myself, and they're a really great organization. If you'd like to make a donation to the Boy Scouts or Cub Scouts, I put a link up in top corner of the video and you can click that to donate to this local pack or I'll put a link down below in the bottom of the description where you can choose to donate to your own local charter. Thanks guys, have a good day, bye.